Hi everyone and welcome to our second language lift presentation for today. Uh, today's presentation is on German, so using different tenses to talk about holidays or hobbies. And I'm sure we're all missing holidays and hobbies at the moment, so let's enjoy ourselves while we can. Uh, my name is Zoe and I'm one of the school's college liaison assistants here at the University of Chester and today I am joined by Ursula Lepping who will be running today's language lift presentation. Would you like to just say hello Ursula? Hello! <laughs> You'll see her shortly anyway because like I say she's going to be presenting for you uh, and I also have my colleague uh, Chantal here who will be moderating any questions as they come in throughout the presentation today. I will shortly hand over to Ursula um, and during this presentation, as I was saying, you can ask any questions. You might also want to get involved in any activities, give us ideas about what you're thinking about what Ursula is talking about. Uh, and you can do that via the chat function on the right hand side of your screen. If you'd like to do that anonymously, you can do that. You just need to tick that you wish to be anonymous. Uh, your video and your audio or anything like that won't be shared, so you don't need to worry about anything like that. Uh, you can also like other people's questions. So if somebody asks a question that you really enjoy and you would like to ask that question, you can just click that you like that and we will come to the ones that have been liked the most um, at the start, just so that we make sure the ones that everyone wanted to be asked are asked in case we um, run out of questions. And then at the end of the session today, Chantal will collate any of the question and ask Ursula these at the end of the session, OK? So I think we're just about ready to start, Ursula. Is that all OK with you? That all sounds good, thank you. Perfect, over to you then. OK. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining uh, me uh, for this uh, German session today. Um, I'm going to be taking you through a whistle stop um, revision tour of using the different tenses in German because as I am sure you're all aware um, it is key to getting a really good grade um, at GCSE um, so not only to be able to recognize what the different tenses are but also to use them in your speaking and your writing. Um, we're also going to be um, looking at how to vary your word order um, so looking at manipulating some of the sentences and the language that we were using in order to improve the quality of your writing. Um, so as Zoe has already said, um, at any point during the, um, the session, if you have any questions that come up, you can write them in the chat. Um, it would also be a very good idea for you to have a pen and paper at the ready because um, we're going to be doing some activities which we could we could think about as being active revision. So I'm going to be asking you questions and asking you to note down um, and brainstorm. Um, so have a, a pen and paper uh, to hand. OK. Um, we're going to um, focus on the vocabulary um, of hobbies first of all and on the screen um, you can see a quite a short list of hobbies. I will give you a minute to see how many of those hobbies you recognise. So have a read through and note down in English what those hobbies are. We can see if anyone wants to share their hobbies in the chat as well, if you'd like, and I can see anyone. Yeah, any any extra ones that aren't on there? That's not a definitive list. <laughs> <laughs> yes, anything at all in addition to the suggestions. Uh, please add those to the chat. OK, well, Follensen, anybody get that one? It's to laze around. Um, you can also say chillen, but it's always good to try and use the German option um, as opposed to the um, um, what we call the Denglish option. So lots of English words have been adopted into, into German. So people do talk about chillen, but faulenzen is the German way of saying it. So faulenzen to laze around. Fernsehen, that's probably an easy one to watch TV. Um, 
what's notable about fanzine about that verb it's separable okay someone just told us that that's what they like to do so well that's yeah. fanzine or faulenzen uh, i think it was fanzine let me just fanzine. check <laughs> fanzine yeah well who who doesn't and who hasn't made their way through netflix um during <laughs> during not uh, lockdown okay it's kino again be nice to do that again, won't, won't it, when we're, when we're able to, to go to the cinema. Computer spiele spielen, that's an easy one. Zeit mit Freunden verbringen. To spend time with friends. Musik hören, that's an easy one. Einkaufen gehen. Um, again, it is possible to say shoppen especially if you're going um, to go shopping um, as a uh, as an activity rather than going to do your food shopping. But Einkaufen gehen is to go shopping. Auf dem Handy spielen, to play on your mobile. Und lesen, to read. So we've also had Eislaufen. Oh, Eislaufen. Very nice. Yeah. Um, ins Kino gehen. Yeah. And I, I, I hope my pronunciations are coming through OK. <laughs> it's, it's, ex, it's excellent, Zoe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the GCSE you did many years ago obviously, <laughs> obviously paid off, hasn't it? So, um, OK, so if you can think of any more hobbies, we're going to be coming on to, to looking at some sports. As um, So ice laufen is, is, is great, ice skating. We're going to be coming on to sports a little bit later. So add to uh, the list as much as possible. OK, but what do we do um, when if we want to talk about these hobbies, um, put them into sentences, um, concentrating first of all on the present tense. OK, um, well, the first thing we need to do when we're formulating sentences is to figure out who's talking. So who is the person, uh, the subject? Um, are we talking about ourselves? Are we talking about other people? So here's a quick reminder of the personal pronouns. Um, and I've highlighted a circled a couple of, of things which I think uh, are worth mentioning because we can get a little bit confused about them and make mistakes. So, um, ich, unless it's at the beginning of a sentence, unlike in English, is written with a small letter. And as an English, as a native English speaker, that can seem a little bit counterintuitive. So don't forget that unless it's at the start of a sentence, ich is written with a small letter, OK? The only pronoun which is written with a capital letter is if we go right to the bottom and look at the, um, the pronoun Z, and this is the, the, the Z um, for the U as in the polite form of you. Um, so that's the only one that's written with a capital letter. The last thing that I'd like to um, uh, just point out is it can be a bit confusing, can't it? Because there are three pronouns that are all Z. Um, so we need to be sure um, when we're using them that we know exactly which one we're using. So we have she, Z, we have they, Z, and we have the you, polite, Z. So can be a little bit confusing. Um, OK, so. First of all, if we look at um, weak or regular verbs, so these are the ones, these are the these are the easy ones, these are the ones that follow a pattern. And if we take one of the verbs that we had um, from before, from Musik, Hören, Hören is to listen to, this is a weak or regular verb. Now, what do we do if we want to use this verb, take a pronoun and um, formulate a sentence? Well, what do we always do in German? Well, the first thing we always do is we take the infinitive, as in 
the, the form that ends in en, as in hören, we knock off the en and then we add the following endings. So, um, what's the ending for ich? See if you know these off by heart and you predict them, you can have a go at predicting them before we go through them. So, ich, oops, höre. Okay, ich höre. What's the ending for the do form? Du hörst. What's the ending for er, sie and es? So the, the, the third person hört. Er, sie oder es hört. What's the ending for ihr? Ihr hört. What's the ending for wir? Wir hören. What about sie? Sie hören. And what about our final polite sie? Sie hören. I'm sure you were spot on with your endings. So the point is, as long as we know who we're talking about and looking at these weak or regular verbs, and we have a lot of weak or regular verbs um, when we're talking about hobbies, hören, spielen, um, etc., etc. Um, this is what we need to do. Okay. Um, life isn't always simple. If only we, 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 everything, all verbs were regular, um, and we could just follow that pattern all the time. Sadly, as you know, that's not the case. Um, so we also have um, strong verbs. Um, or we can call them irregular verbs. So why do we call them strong verbs, do you think? Anybody, I wonder if anybody has any ideas why these verbs are called, these irregular verbs are, might be called strong verbs. What's strong about them? Any ideas? No, we haven't got anything through just that's yet. That's okay. Well, it might be coming um, through though. Sometimes it takes a moment, but we can that, see. <laughs> that's okay. Well, um, I like to think about it in that these strong verbs they don't follow the crowd. Okay, they do things in their own way, and they don't follow the pattern of these regular verbs. So there are a number of things that these strong verbs do in the present tense, which is a bit different. So if we look at um, a verb like lesen, if we look, um, somebody said that they liked fernsehen, if we look at a verb like sehen, what some verbs, strong verbs do, is they have, they undergo a vowel change. So as you're, you know, you, you take your verb, you knock off the en, you put the endings onto the appropriate, to go with the appropriate pronouns. Well, as you can see with lesen, there's a vowel change. So ich lese du liest, er sie es liest, ihr liest, wir lesen, sie sie lesen. So there's a vowel change, but only in the the do forms and the ersi and es forms. OK, so that's one thing that these um, strong verbs do. We have actually got a few that have come through, if you'd like me just to say what they said. Oh, yeah, great. You said, is it mandatory to use the subject like in English? I, you, she, question mark. And another one says, because they tend to keep the to, to keep the pattern, question mark. <laughs> um. I'm not I don't really I don't, I'm not sure about the question. Is it mandatory to keep the. To use the subject so like in English, is it mandatory to use the subject um, like I, you or she? Um, well, it depends whether that's what you want to say. 
So it's not mandatory to it's not mandatory to use it, but it depends what it is you want to express. Maybe I've not understood the the the, the question perfectly. We can perhaps come back to that if that's yes. if if that's not what the question's asking. But no, it's not man it's not mandatory. Um, but you um, you know if you're talking about you or or he or she, yes, you do need to include it. It's yeah. not enough to only use the verb. Maybe this is the, the the question. It's not enough to only use the verb form. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And the commander says because they tend. Is it because they tend to keep um, to the pattern? The 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 strong verbs or yeah. Well, the strong strong verbs tend to not. Yeah, not keep the pattern. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the strong verbs tend to do their own thing. So they don't they don't follow the crowd. OK, so strong verbs are ones that do odd things. OK, so one of the odd things that these verbs do is they will have a vowel change. There are other there are other strange things that strong verbs do. So some add an umlaut. So an umlaut um, for anybody, any of the other, um, I know um, uh, Marta is watching. I'm not sure whether Marta's done Spanish. The umlaut is the, is the, the two dots. So, um, so some strong verbs like the verb fahren, to travel, you'll see um, in the do form and the as es form, they add an umlaut. So ich fahre du fährst, yeah? Er fährt, sie fährt, um, ihr fahrt, wir fahren, sie, sie fahren. So these strong verbs, they do some strange things. Now, the, the best thing to do in terms of formulating your sentences and using verbs at all is you can assume that verbs are regular, okay, as in on the slide before. Um, however, when you come across strong verbs, learn them off by heart. There's no easy way around this. So um, my top tip would be um, to learn um, the, the common verbs that you're likely to use when you're talking, for example, about hobbies, the lesen, spielen, fahren, machen, etc. Um, and if there's something um, irregular about them, then you need to learn them. So there isn't really an easy answer around this. But um, the principle is the same and you will see that the endings are the same on these. OK, so there's no difference in the endings as opposed to the other ones. So that's how we formulate um, verbs, how we conjugate verbs in the present tense. Your turn now again to do some uh, brainstorming. So we had ice laufen earlier. I'm going to give you a minute to um, write down as many sports as you can and feel free to do that either in the chat or just on a piece of paper in front of you. So a minute starting now. Perfect. Are you interested in sports, Ursula? Yes, I am. I am. I am. And I have a I have a I have a favorite sport, but I'm not going to tell you what it is because it's going to give it's going to give away it's going to give away an answer in a second. Yeah. <laughs> but Perhaps I anyone puts down your favorite sport. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then I'll give I'll give them an honorary an honorary A star at GCSE. That's what I'll do. I've <laughs> got a few coming through now. OK, nice. We'll get you to practice your pronunciation then, Zoe. Wow. <laughs> I can try. Do you want me to wait a moment before I start saying them though? Yes. Just, yeah. Let's yeah. give, let's just, just maybe just 30 seconds or so more. That's absolutely fine. Give people, people a chance. I think I know what two of them are. I'm not sure what I know what the other one is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
We've got quite a few here. Excellent. Okay. You would, you, would you like to? Yeah, would you like to have a have a go at reading out the um what we've got in yeah, the chat? Yes. So we've got um ice hockey. Yeah. Um, is it Baden? Baden. Ba Baden. 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 Yeah. Tish tennis. Yeah. Uh, Laufen. Yeah. Uh, Kegeln. Kegeln. Bowling. Bowling. Yeah, that's not on my yeah. list. Yeah. Kegeln. I've got someone just put through basketball, and um, they've just said that they that's a sport. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then corball. Corb ball. Yeah. Corb ball. There we go. Corb, corb ball. That's a netball. Yeah. yeah. I'm wearing yeah. Loads. <laughs> yeah. And we also have a Rayton. 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 Yeah. Perfect. Excellent. Well, there are some ex some um, really good um, good ones there. There's um, one or two of those on my list. So this was an off the top of my head list. Fußball, tennis, schwimmen, hockey, radfahren, reiten. There we go. Mm -hmm. Leicht athletic, joggen and laufen. Um, Ski laufen, Ski fahren, klettern, tanzen, training im Fitnessstudio, turnen, wandern, judo, karate. So, um, and obviously, there are lots and lots and more hobbies and um, and uh, yeah, the Corb Ball, all of them. So um, if you are somebody who um, likes any of these sports, if you wanted to talk about your likes and dislikes um, in writing or in speaking, what options do we have? How could we take um, some of these uh, sports or the hobbies and express a like or a dislike? Does anybody have any suggestions as to how we could take any one of these and express a like or a dislike? We've got ich liebe Reiten or ich liebe nicht Reiten. Oh, did I say what? Yeah. Reiten. <laughs> Reiten. Yeah. A absolutely. We could use the verb lieben and we could say ich liebe Reiten. Um, and and yes, anytime we want to say that we don't like something, we can use nicht. So with the hobbies that we have in in front of us you'll see that they've all got capital letters and they all have capital letters because in the form that they are there they're all nouns so if we look at something like tanzen tanzen if it has a capital letter is a noun and it's dancing um tanzen of course is also an a, a, a verb. So if it was written with a small letter, tansen, it would be a verb. And we can uh, use that as a as a verb. And we can say ich tanze gern. So gern is another option for expressing a like with something. So lieben is great. Um, adding gern is great. We have got another one here. Do you want me to show you this yes. one? Just in case yes. we have ich mag or and ich mag nicht. Brilliant. And ich mag is another um, great way of expressing your like and dislike. And this can be used with nouns. So we can say with any of these examples, we can say ich mag Fußball, Tennis, ich mag Schwimmen, ich mag Hockey, ich mag Tanzen oder ich mag Tanzen nicht. So um, yeah, so there are various ways of expressing that. So ich mag, ich liebe or add gern. So um, 
So if you are going to do that, shall we say we're going to go with the option of using um, GAN. So for example, what I mean is if we were talking about Fußball, OK, um, if I wanted to say I like playing football, I could say ich spiele gern Fußball because spielen is the verb that we would use with football. OK, so ich spiele gern Fußball. Which of the options on the screen would you use with spielen apart from football? Which of the options on the screen would you use with machen? And which of the options on the screen would you perhaps use with gehen? I'll just give you a moment to think about that. Just while we're waiting for that, we've got about five minutes left. Oh my goodness, right. Well, we're we'll, we'll going to crack on. We're going to crack on. <laughs> OK, right. so spielen, machen or gehen? Well, um, let's start with spielen. Which of those hobbies would you use with the verb spielen? Well, you would say ich spiele gern Fußball, ich spiele gern Hockey, ich spiele gern Tennis. So spielen is a verb that you would perhaps use with those hobbies. What about um, ich gehe gern? So I like going. Well, we can combine this now. Ich gehe gern schwimmen. Ich gehe gern Rad fahren. Ich gehe gern reiten. Ich gehe gern joggen. So as you will see there, we have two verbs going on. Um, ich gehe gern and then schwimmen as a as a verb. So um, the, and the last option is how would we, what would we use with machen? Well, we would use sorry, there's a few more for gehen. Ich gehe gern Skilaufen. Ich gehe klettern. Ich gehe wandern und tanzen. What about ich mache gern? Um, well, we would commonly use that with those options. So I like doing athletics. Yeah, ich mache gern Leichtathletik, ich mache gern Judo, etc. So um, just something to be um, aware of um, that different verbs can be used or will be used with different um, hobbies. OK, now then. Um, one of the following statements is not true. Can you guess which one? And one of these statements is not true about me. So have a read through those and maybe you could um, write in the chat which one you think is not true. Any guesses? We've got number two. Ja, nee, das ist richtig. Ich lese nicht gern Fantasy Bücher. Mm -hmm. um, sorry. <laughs> uh, number four. <laughs> uh, nein, das stimmt. I, I, ich fahre jedes Jahr nach Deutschland. Oh, we've got some more. Uh, number one. <laughs> Richtig! Ich spiele nicht gern. Ich spiele nie Computerspiele. So, yeah. Um, what I was going to do if there was time was to get people to do the same, but I know that we're not going to have time to do, to do that. So if you can, how, if you can maybe a later date, write down five things that you like or you dislike um, and um, yeah, one of them one of them has to be uh, has to be untrue um, but we will move on because I want to um, at least talk about um, expanding on this. So what about adding adding to your likes and your dislikes when or how often you do things? So van would have be oft. Um, ich spiele jeden Samstag tennis. Tennis is my liebling sport. So this is actually my favorite. My favorite sport is tennis. So ich spiele jeden Samstag 
tennis. So Yeadon Samstag is every Saturday. So, and we can substitute Samstag for any other day of the week. So Yeadon Montag, but whatever. Um, how many words or expressions like Yeadon Samstag do you know? I'm sure you know quite a number of them. Um, let me show you. These are some of the ones that I'm sure um, you have come across. So we can substitute Jeden Samstag if we need to with other expressions like Jede Woche every week, Jeden Tag, Jedes Jahr. Um, einmal pro Woche, once a week. How would we say twice a week or three times a week? Zweimal pro Woche, dreimal pro, pro Woche. We could look at um, using an expression like normalerweise. So what is it that you normally do, usually do? Sehr oft, manchmal, selten or nie. So we can, we can, it's always good um, uh, at, GCS, at GCSC or generally to say as much as you can. Um, so adding um, a time or a frequency is a really, really good idea. So if we were to take a Spieler jeden Samstag uh, tennis. Um, spielen is a, is a regular verb. So as you can see there, we've just conjugated it in the regular normal way. And the verb is the second idea in the sentence. Now, German is super, super practical because it's very easy to, to um, change around the verb order. We don't have to start with ich or du or er or sie. We can also start with the time. And if we start with the time, we can take that sentence and we can, um, excuse me, we can um, play around with it. But if we do that, the verb still has to be the second idea in the sentence. So we just kind of flip around the ich spiele to the spiele ich. So the reason we talk about it being the second idea in the sentence and not the second word is it's not always the second word because we can have a whole phrase in front of that. So it's always good to vary your word order in your writing. Um, it just adds um, a little bit more class. Let's have a look at this one, slightly more elements in the sentence. So, ich gehe manchmal, sometimes, mit meinen Freunden ins Kino. So, how, how could we change the word order in that sentence? So, if we started with manchmal with the sometimes, how would that sentence play out? What could we what could we do with that? Well, what we could do with that is manchmal gehe ich mit meinen Freunden ins Kino. Have you heard of another rule in German, which is the time manner place rule? Maybe you have. Maybe you haven't, doesn't matter either way. If we look at that sentence, what we have is in with manchmal is a time, okay? And what we mean by a manner is perhaps with whom or how you're doing something, in this case, with your friends. And then the place, well, ins Kino, uh, the cinema, it could be a town, it, 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 anything really. The general rule of thumb when you have lots of different elements in your sentence is that's the order that they go in. So it doesn't matter if you start with ich gehe, as in the first sentence, it doesn't matter if you start with the time. What comes after that is generally 
follows the rule of time, manner and place. So see how many of the hobbies you can uh, talk about and see if you can add some time phrases and see if you can manipulate and play around with the with the word order in order to do that. How are we doing for time, Zoe? OK, so how long does it, it's it's absolutely fine as long as everyone is fine to still be here, to be fair. Um, yeah. so how long do you think you've got left? Well, I think I think it would be good if we can um, cover at least the the future tense, if people would be interested in 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 looking at that, because the future tense is actually really, really easy. So if we have if we have time, um, to, con to continue yeah, you, or if we want to do a few minutes to if you just got a few minutes to um, finish that last little bit and then we can go through the because there are a few questions. That Absolutely. No, I, I, that I, um, that's fine. Or we can just go straight to questions. But let's have a quick look at the future because okay. it, yeah. it, it is easy. There's not much about German that's easy. OK, Germ um, but the future tense is easy because basically what we've just said about the present tense and the way that we form it. The most common way of expressing the future in German is to use the present tense, but with a future time marker. So, sticking with the example of going to the cinema, ich gehe morgen ins Kino. Okay, I'm going to the cinema tomorrow. So, what would what we've done there is we've used the present tense, but we've added in a time marker, and we can also play around with it. You, you probably gathered I have a bit of a thing about word order. If we want to start with um, the time, morgen, gehe ich ins Kino, that's also fine. But within that, if you include a time marker, that is what expresses the future. OK, so there are lots of future time markers that you, I'm sure, have come across. So other ones that you could use instead of Morgan tomorrow. My personal favourite is Uber Morgan. I love Uber Morgan. So the day after tomorrow and you can go on and on and on with Uber Morgan. If you wanted to say the day after the day after tomorrow, it becomes Uber Uber Morgan and you can go on you know, forever and ever. Anyway, um, nächste Woche, nächstes Jahr, in zwei Wochen, in der Zukunft, wenn ich älter bin, im Sommer. So in your GCSE work, if you're talking about what you're going to do once all of your GCSEs are over or when you're older, these are the time markers um, that you can use to express the future. But remember, if you any one of these that you use this would count as one idea in your sentence. So if you start, if you started a sentence by saying, wenn ich älter bin, okay, that's the first idea. Then your your verb would need to come second. So um, yeah, wenn ich älter bin, fahre ich nach Amerika. Okay, so these are all the um, Count as one idea. So see how many of, of of those you can you can use. There is another future tense in um, in German, however, and um, this may well be the option that you have learnt at school. And this is the future tense that's formulated with a part of werden and an infinitive. So. Ich werde nächste Woche nach Liverpool fahren. I will go to Liverpool next week. You use a form of werden along with an infinitive. Um, this future tense is one that normally expresses a bit more intent. So it's not just sort of your vague plans of what you're going to do tomorrow that you, you know you're chatting to your, your parents about but there's a bit more in intent expressed with 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 this so ich werde im sommer mit meiner familie nach spanien fahren yeah i 
am going to Spain with my family in the summer. Oh, how nice would that be? Maybe <laughs> at some in, in, in a summer sometime we'll be able to do that. Um, again, we can manipulate the um, sentences to include the time and the manner and the place using um, this future tense as well. We could start with im Sommer. Im Sommer werde ich mit meiner Familie nach Spanien fahren. The final thing that I'm going to say about this future tense with, with werden and the thing to stress is that this infinitive, so whatever it is that you are going to do in the future, um, the infinitive always goes at the end of the sentence as it does in all of those. So you can play around with the other bits, but the infinitive always goes at the end. So I'm going to stop talking now and, and um, give Zoe time to um, read some of the questions. But if you would like to look through the rest of the, 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 the PowerPoint, there's a section on talking about the past and there are some activities that you will be able to work through. So um, looking at the, the, the tense, the perfect tense that you um, commonly use in speaking and in informal writing. Um, so please, um, you know, work your way through the rest of the, the slides and hopefully that will be a, a refresh on using the past tense as well. OK. Perfect, thank you. If anyone does um, want to have a look at the rest of the, the presentation, if they want to pop us an email, the more than welcome to, maybe we could send it over to the Mercer. Would you like us to do that? I think I, I think so. That would be that would be good if anybody would um, would like to, because there's a um, just a really uh, quick through. There's just a, a reminder of what's important about and also um, how you um, form these past participles and also using time markers. Similarly, the thing about time markers is, 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 is very relevant for when you're talking about the past tense, not just about the future tense. So for anybody who would like a refresher on that, That's then um, that would be fine to share it. Yes. Yeah, I've just sent put my email address in the chat because you've sent it over to me, haven't you? So then I can do that if, if they'd like to do that. That's absolutely fine. But just before we go into uh, the questions, I just wanted to say thank you very much for everyone for getting involved there. Anyway, that's probably why it took us a little bit longer, but it was nice. Yes, yeah, that's everyone. great. Yes. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I just wanted to check with Chantal if there were any questions. I've seen a few come through and then she'll ask them to you if that's OK. Of course. Yes. Thank you. Hi, Ursula. Um, yeah, yeah, we do have, we've got three, two are grammar questions and okay. one is about German as a, a career pathway. Okay. Um, so the first one is, if you get the word order wrong, are native German speakers still likely to understand what you said or yes. is it a big problem? That's okay. an easy question to answer. <laughs> yeah, La lang language is all about communication. OK, mm -hmm. and if you get the word order wrong or if you get your ending wrong, you're still communicating. So uh, at the end of the day, communication, that's what languages are for. Yeah, that's why we learn them. So, yeah, and native speakers will understand you. That's great, thank you. Um, the second one was, is it essential to use the article every single time um, when you're speaking German? Or again, would people understand you if you missed um, the daddy or das off, off words, some, off, out of your sentence sometimes? Again, if you, if you um, missed out the daddy or das, or if you got the daddy or das wrong, okay, if you got the wrong gender, people will will still understand you it's still but it it won't be completely correct so mm -hmm. if you if you think about if you think about people speaking english um and people who maybe don't um use the english language um completely correctly okay mm -hmm. um people can still understand what's being said and what's being communicated so we're always striving to get things right yeah. <laughs> and we're always striving to do it. But yes, people will understand you. That's great because it really encourages people to try then, doesn't it? And sort of perfect as they go if they're it, still it, able to be understood. Absolutely. And as I said, I can't I can't stress enough languages are for communicating. OK, and um, it's about 
um, communicating a message. Mm -hmm. And if you get the DAD or DAS wrong, you're still communicating a message. As long as you can remember what the uh, what it is that you're wanting to talk about. If you couldn't remember the the um, the actual, you know, the actual noun or the object, that would be different. Mm -hmm. But the dare, the deal, the das, you know, people would still would still understand you. Great, thank you. So our third question is to do with uh, German supporting a career pathway. Yeah. Um, so this student has heard that German is a good language to help you get a job later, particularly if you want to work in technology. Do you think that's true? Um, I I do think that's I do think that's very true, and I think what what our what our German graduates are finding is because German is actually less and less taught in schools, so there are fewer and fewer people who do German. That our our graduates are finding that German is like their unique selling point. Mm -hmm. Um, I know a lot more about translation. Translation is my mm -hmm. thing and there is a huge amount of work um, to do with German in the translation mm -hmm. industry and to do with, um, yes, to do with technology, but not, not only to do with technology. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you have to think about German in that way. It's kind of, if, if, it, if German is something that you want to pursue, mm -hmm. it is going to be one of your unique selling points because not many people, unfortunately, um, learn it anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not great. saying that. I'm biased. Obviously, I'm biased. <laughs> um, but um, but I, I do think that's it's true. And I, I can confirm that's a point. My brother works for a big international software company. He works in France, but actually the majority of their events and sort of trade uh, negotiations, things are done in Germany in German. So half their company speaks speaks German um, and that's a big software company. So I've seen yeah. a little of that as well. Yeah. Um, I think that's everything question wise. OK, perfect. Thank you very much, Chantal. And thank you very much, Ursula, for answering those questions. And also for your presentation today, it was great. I think we've all learned something, which is which is lovely. And oh, thank lovely. you very much to everyone who has also uh, joined us this afternoon as well. I have popped some links in the chat to the other language lifts that we have got going on. So if you did want to book onto any more of them, you can do via that link. I've also just popped it in all of the other um, outreach events that we have going on. And you can find a lot of our um, resources and helpful links and videos and whatnot on our web page via the outreach link there. And um, so yeah, I suppose all that's left to do is to say thank you very much and we'll see you again. Have you got anything else you'd like to say, Ursula, before we finish? Danke und auf Wiedersehen und viel Glück. Viel Glück. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. I, I hope to I hope to see people at the um well unfortunately I can't actually see anybody, but <laughs> I hope to see people um at the our next German event, which is a will be about the environment. Yes. Perfect. Thank you very much. We'll hope to see you all there. All right, thank you again. Bye. Okay, tschüss.